Hi, it's Catherine from Catherine's Crafty Creations. I am going to show you how to do a sublimation on cotton t-shirts. Okay, so one of my clients needs a t-shirt signed and I have cotton, all cotton and the company sent me all white cotton and I was like, I want it 50-50 polyester. So I found a way to make um, a do-it-yourself polymer that will stick to the cotton fabrics and allow us to sublimate on them. So we're going to go through that process right now. I'm going to show you how to make it from ingredients from Walmart. And we're going to check it out and see if it works. And we're going to wash it and we're going to do one side with it on there and one side with it out to see if it actually works. Okay? So follow me over there to the studio. All right, so here we go. These are our ingredients. We have our mini wax polycrylic. Make sure you have a clear matte, crystal clear top coat. That is the what you'll be looking for for this. And this little tiny can right here is an eight ounce can. And it is about $11 at Walmart. And you're going to have some water right here. I've used some already. This is your regular water. I am not an endorser of Ozarka. I just happen to like Ozarka water. And that's what I'm going to use today. And I have some, uh, I taught chemistry online. So I still have my graduated cylinder and my beakers. And I'm going to use a traditional Pyrex um, water a, uh, measuring glass. So that you can see the conversion between cups or English conversions, SI conversions, and English conversions, and um, the metric system, okay? So let's take a look at it. I've already made some. I made 32 ounces, and it only takes 8 tablespoons of this makes 32 ounces of this, okay? So this is a 32-ounce bottle of this polymer mix that we're going to spray. But the way it's done, and we're going to make a little tiny amount here for you. So you'll see it in inside of the gar inside of the glass. Sorry about the shaking. Okay. So do not shake this can. You want it exactly as it is. Do not shake this can. I lift the lid using my flat spatula, my Cricut spatula, very carefully, just gently around. Don't even bend the spatula. Just as long as you do it gently all the way around, it'll pop. Okay. Now we will add. I'm going to put it in here so you'll see what it looks like. And um, I'm going to find a little transfer bottle for you so you'll know. So you take a two tablespoons of this mix of uh, the polymer per every eight, ounce, eight ounces of water. So one, two, okay? And I am going to rinse that immediately because it is quick drying. I don't want that to be hardened onto my tablespoon. Just give me one moment. All right. And my, I use a tablespoon that's exclusive to this mixture. I do not use this in my kitchen ever again. So make sure you get a, a little plastic one that's easily distri uh, distributed and thrown away. Easy uh, disposal and thrown away, excuse me. So then we use eight ounces of water for every two tablespoons of the polymer. So for water, an eight ounce of water, for your conversion sake, if you're using a beaker like I am, eight ounces of water is about 237 milliliters, okay? So what we'll do is we'll fill it up. You see a beaker is, like if you learn in chemistry, beakers aren't exact, but you can see a measurement on the side, and right here is 225, right? Because right at the top is 250. So we're going to 225, and then we're going to add Using our graduated cylinder, which is more accurate, we're going to add the other um, amount that's going to add up to 237. So let's go up to 2, let me pour it this way so you can see, 225. Right? Okay. And so we need to what, 12 more ounces to get to 237? So we'll pour our graduated cylinder up to the 10. And I do need my funnel, which I had two seconds ago. Well, I guess I'll just use my skill set here. I mean, my funnel's missing. So we'll do, we'll add 10 uh, milliliters, which will put us at 235. Okay, just add, pour a little more out of that. So our 10 milliliters puts us at 235. go the meniscus is right up under there I'd like to be 
precise here, forgive me. All right, so at 235, and then there's a two more, will get us 237. And that'll be our eight ounces. There we go. And we'll mix this with eight ounces of water. And that's our polymer. So now we have our polymer that we're gonna spray on our cotton. And we'll show you exactly how that spray will allow the gases from the sublimation. Remember sublimation is going from solid to gas, skipping the liquid state. So the heat is going to lock this into these polymers and lock them onto the fibers of the cotton, okay? So this is what we did, as simple as that. Make sure you mix this up. And when I got it, I just shook this up to make the mixture. But in this case, you will pour this into a spray bottle and mix it up and that's all you need to do, okay? One well, of the first things we're going to do is press our shirt a little bit before we spray it. And remember, you always have to make sure that you have something separating the front of the shirt from the back of the shirt, okay? So we're gonna set our shirt, move all the things here, have a little tight space here. We're gonna set our shirt, and this is a small shirt, adult small, just for demonstration purposes. We have the temperature set at 375 degrees. I'm gonna press the shirt for about 15 seconds or maybe 10 seconds. Give ourselves about 10 seconds. Not sure if you can see that other thing. There we go. So we'll press the shirt for about 10 seconds. Yep, okay. And we'll bring that up. Now we'll transfer it over here to our table. Let's take you over here with me. Alrighty. I'm not sure I stained that. Okay. So we're going to go over here with our table and we're going to spray the shirt really, really well. really really well i'm going to separate the outside of the shirt with the inside of the shirt with a piece of cardboard that i have wrapped in butcher paper so let me get you over here with me here so we're going to spray it first we're going to separate the back from the front using a piece of butcher paper we'll use a piece of cardboard wrapped in butcher paper because i don't like the smell of burnt cardboard and, and I want that imprinted into the uh, shirt itself. So we press the shirt for about 15 seconds so we have a flat surface, no wrinkles. And we're going to put that there. Now we're going to spray the shirt with our solution that we created here. Let me raise that up so you can see that better. And that stain does not come off, it's just there. Okay, so we're gonna spray this really really well with our polymer and I made it good and spray it really really good and once we spray it I heat it at 375 and then as I'm coating it I'm kind of soaking it because I want my stuff to stick on here but I put it on 375 and we're going to slide it over here and I'm going to take you with me, 375 for 30 seconds, okay? I'm going to set this under here, all nice and cozy light, turn the light so you can see it. And I have a swing, a swing, um, swing press, nobody likes a swing press, okay? So we got it under here all straight and crispy and we're going to we saturate it right so we're going to set that down for we're going to wait to get back to set 375 again once it starts beeping again we know we're at 375 okay we're going to press it for 30 seconds yep it's going to smoke because it's wet so expect the steam to rise. Expect the rising steam that you see right here. And make sure it's straight because you don't want it to press. 
All right, so we'll lift that. Okay, and then we're going to spray it again. All right. Now you want to protect the surface. And I see I got a little tiny stain there I did not notice before. This is a practice shirt anyways. We're not going to worry about that stain. Which I really like to know where it came from. All right, so we're going to practice that again. We're going to spray it again. Remember, this is 100% cotton. I'm going to spray it again. Medium pressure, 375. 30 more seconds. This time we're going to set it. We want to set. Oh, it's not 375 yet. Let's look at the chance to go back to 375. Let's let it go back up to 375. And then we'll cure, uh, cure it once we place it back on there again. That's us curing our um, polymer into the shirt. Bothers me that there's a stain on here now. <laughs> Somewhere when I transferred it from here, the table to there, I got a stain on it. Okay, almost ready. There we go. Now we'll cure it again. Excuse me. 30 more seconds. And then we'll be ready to sublimate. And we'll put our sublimated item on the shirt. So now our shirt's ready. Pop that up, hit the button there. Take it off, and now let's place our image. Oh shit! I'm gonna put the image on. So now it's a little flat, it's a little crispy. It's kind of like putting starch on something. A little crispy. So we're gonna put the image on, and then we're going to wash it and see if it stays. We're gonna wash, put the image on, press it with our Teflon, and see if it stays. And I will be right back. When I put your paper, we'll be right back. Okay, we have sublimated, and we let it cool. Now we're going to take it off, and look at that. Look at that big, bright, beautiful color. So the question is, does this last, right? Because normally when you sublimate on cotton, it will not come out this beautiful and, and bright and cold, bold. Um, you can see my image. You can see where all of the uh, color came off. You can see that it held pretty tight. And here's the other thing, how you know it stuck to the polymer, is because... It did not come through on the paper. And that's how you know it stuck to the shirt and didn't go through the other side. So when it got stuck into the actual fabric, that means that the fabric grabbed onto the molecules. So we're going to let this sit for 24 hours, wash it, and see if it's just as vibrant here as it was, as it would have been on a polyester shirt. I'm also going to um, sublimate a polyester shirt so we can compare what it looks like here and what it looks like on polyester. So you can see our polymers, that's bright, bright, bright. As a matter of fact, it picks up on colors that I forgot I had in there. <laughs> the uh, actual yarn going behind the, um, the name. So this did come out very bright. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on a cotton shirt without polymer spray, okay? So this came out pretty good, came out really bright. And um, I'm going to show you what it looks like with a cotton shirt. So hold one second, and you'll see the distinct difference between pressing on cotton and pressing on a, uh, something that's been sprayed or treated for sublimation. And we're back. So I positioned you so that you can be right above the shirt. This is a 100% cotton shirt. We're not going to spray the polymer on this, and we're going to use this as comparison. We're still going to put the, the cardboard underneath, the cardboard between it, so it won't melt to the other side. But we'll look at the cardboard and see if it bleeds through. If it bleeds through, that shows you this is 100% cotton and you're just not supposed to sub on cotton. And I'm going to show you what it looks like, the difference between using the polymer and not using the polymer on a cotton shirt. And you'll know that this polymer really did work. And you don't have to go spend $60 on these name brands. You can just use what you got, right? And just run and spend $11 and make yourself 32 ounces of this stuff and it lasts a, a good little while. 
I may put some money out of business. I don't know. Now, first thing we want to do is we want to measure again because even though this is going to be the one that nobody wears, I do prefer things to be centered. Sometimes name tags, the uh, tags are not centered, so don't go by that. You look at where the shirt is and you go by the center. You measure, measure once, measure twice, cut once, right? So you measure where it is and you. I go from the top of the ball two inches down from the top of the ball from the neck, okay? So once I'm there, I will use heat tape, heat resistant tape. Don't just use any old tape. Use heat resistant tape and make sure this is down. There's no space. And I'm gonna show you how to sublimate mugs as well later. It's gonna be a different video. More content with that. But I was asked by a client just to show her how this is done. And I don't mind that. I mean, if you wanna do it yourself, I'm good with that. But I have time to do a lot of these. Whereas this is where well, most people don't. So it's a bit easier just to order them from me than to try to do it themselves. So we're just gonna stick this on here. I'm gonna put our cardboard back inside. And this is just a piece of a box that I cut and covered with butcher paper. It's not, you can also buy cardboard for shirts. It's shaped exactly like a shirt. So if you want to do that, don't let me stop you. But I mean, I could just cut through a, a box and be done with it. Okay. A discarded box. So make sure that my, my image is straight. That image does not look straight to me. Hold on a second. move you over here. Okay. And we're going to go to the press and we're going to put our 100% cotton shirt without the polymer spray on the press. We're still going to use our Teflon sheet to protect the image. You may use butcher paper in between the Teflon too. It's up to you. Okay. And we have it at medium pressure. Let me raise up a little bit. Medium pressure, 380 degrees for 60 seconds. You hear it beeping, you know it's ready. So we're gonna do that, and then we'll be back. Had a low battery situation, so um, let me see if I can make sure this is like it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna do this by hand real quick. So you can see this is close up of the, with the spray. This is without the spray on cotton. You see, you can see images much clearer there. And this is with polyester, which looks very similar to this one. All right? So you can see this is a lot light. This is a little lighter. So I'm going to wash them all, and you'll see the difference. And uh, in 24 hours, we'll wash them, and I'll show you, come back and show you exactly how the, the, the difference is. If you, if you could see it with your naked eye, you'd be able to tell that this is very, very much uh, the cotton without um, the spray is much is uh, lighter. And we're back. So let's look at the, the uh, end results. This is the 100% cotton shirt that we treated with our do-it-yourself solution from the $11 can of polyacrylic mini wax. So we this is treated with an $11 can <laughs> excuse me, of mini wax. And we just mix it with uh, every two tablespoons excuse me, with eight ounces of water. And this is what we did not treat at all. We just sublimated it directly to cotton. And this is polyester, and this is how our control group is what it's supposed to look like, okay? So we know that polyester, uh, sublimation treats better on polyester. This is actually 100% polyester, so it really stuck. All right, so if we look at them, this is our cotton that's been treated with our solution, and it's been washed after 24 hours. And these two look nearly identical, very little fading, if any at all. I don't think there was any. And they look almost identical. The only, thing, only difference is the touch. Touch feels like cotton, feels like polyester. That's it. The print stayed the same. You can still, it's still transparent there. Very clear. Very nicely done. Making sure this is in front of the camera. So you see, they just look identical. So this is one with our solution that we made with the DIY polyacrylic. And this is the one with poly, the polyester directly on it. And now here is the cotton that was untreated. And you see there's a difference there. This is faded. This is the original. 
So it looks like our solution worked quite well. Our DIY solution that we made with polyacrylic, mini wax, two tablespoons for every eight ounces of water. And so we made our solution here out of a, a bottle from Dollar Tree. And we put that for $1.25 and $11 and such and such a cents from Walmart. And that will get us the same results as if we had used one of the professionals like Poly T Plus or the other sublimation on cotton liquids. So we did it with just DIY.